Hey, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of Avis reInvent 2021 here in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE with my co-host Dave Nicholson, cloud analyst here with SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. We've got a great guest, Res the Honor Man, SVP, Cloud Hyperscalers, Transformation at TD Cinex. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on Resda. Hey, good morning. Good morning, hey, so you, you guys. You guys just had this big acquisition with billions and billions of dollars in revenue. Take us through what do you guys do for us at the table for the, for the company. Right, okay, yeah, it is a pretty big one. Uh, we're now for, uh, number 60 on the Fortune 100. Um, worldwide, revenue is around just under $60 billion. Uh, we represent somewhere in the region of uh, 1,500 vendors and OEMs and uh, in over 100 countries. And uh, we serve over 100,000 partners, 150,000 partners now worldwide. So you got everything from the um, endpoint style products, uh, all the way up to uh, data center, cloud, serving from the retail to SMB to VARs, going all the way to enterprise specialists and SIs. So DD Cenex, big company, you global reach, you hit everybody, basically. You, t you sell a lot of product, software, hardware, you name it. Cloud is here. What is the big trend that you guys are seeing with cloud? Because you, you're, and they, you're, you're talking to all the customers. You have a lot of services and you have products. You represent a lot of different brands. How are people rolling them together? Are they composing cloud? What's, what are you seeing in the global landscape? Well, um, we specialize in cloud. We've been doing that for a number of years. And actually, depending on where partners are, within the journey, uh, they will have different levels of specialization. And um, the way we like to look at it is a matrix. Um, in terms of where is the complexity of the product that they're trying to take to market um, versus what is the size and their own maturity. So we uh, tune our services and our support for those partners to help them better understand and onboard all of that technology and address it towards their partners. Um, so if you can imagine, um, you got many, many announcements that were made here, yeah. right? And our partners have to consume all of that information, all of that technology and learn how to use it. And that's where we come in. We, we, we effectively act as the bridge to help them get up there running and lower the barrier of entry for them to execute yeah. on those products. And they want to add services to it, all good. Cloud's perfect for that. So what's the relationship with AWS? I'm sure they're actually enabling a lot of value. What is the relationship with AWS, partner, network? How do you guys, what, what do you guys enable, what do you guys enable with Amazon? So um, if I give you the uh, picture of our cloud practice builder, that's a good place to start. Our cloud practice builder program starts with um, looking at the, the partner, understanding what is their maturity in that path, specifically related to the technologies that they want to work on with AWS. And um, we look at them in terms of have they got the sales capability, have they got the operational capability, the financial setup, and um, really help them then on that journey. So, um, so yeah, we um, can go very, very deep uh, where we have our own cohorts who help those partners get up to speed with So you got to do, do a little vetting, you got to make sure people have the right yep. capabilities and yep. certain people have certain orientation to certain things, maybe levels of certification. Yep. Is there swim lanes developing in the partner network that you guys are working with? big trends, are they specializing more in application modernization? Is it more infrastructure? Or what are you guys seeing in terms of the trends? There are multiple uh, uh, trends there. So as you say, we have one lane specifically for our ISVs, um, one lane for our um, uh, people who host with infrastructure. We are, um, you know, obviously data center is one of our biggest focus areas. Um, and, um, so each of our partners goes into a specific lane, specifically uh, related to where they want to focus on. So if you consider, for instance, um, somewhere in the area of uh, ISVs, um, the primary thing that many of the ISVs out there don't have is the ability to understand all of the AWS programs. So we help them understand that, understand how they can 
uh, get the most optimal uh, cost and program with AWS. And then you get into, you get into the next level, which is around um, uh, their cloud operations, how they actually transact with us. Uh, and you can, you can build a stack, you get into security, and then you get uh, well-architected frameworks. So this is just one of the swim lanes that you could effectively go, and we can help, help build, them, build that out for them. Yeah, so, so Reza, draw a little map for me, a, a sort of a mental map from the perspective of an end user customer. Say I'm a very large organization, I've got a large IT footprint, I'm looking towards modernizing in the future. How am I engaging with what TD Synex is actually delivering to the market? We've been talking about partners, so give us a hypothetical. Again, I'm the customer. Who is, who's the sales rep who's calling on me initially? How am I interacting with you versus the partner? And I know that there are a variety of ways, but give, give us an example. I want to make sure that people watching this understand, because we use the term partner to mean a whole variety of different things. Yeah, very, very good question, because uh, TD Index is one of the biggest companies that the vast majority of the consumers and out there haven't heard of. Right. Yeah, we are for number 16 of Fortune 100. Now, most organizations deal with a local IT, trusted IT partner. That trusted IT partner um, then is who they would go to, whether it is their infrastructure, whether there is their um, um, security, they would work with that partner um, to help them manage it. Now, what we do is really support the partner to have the knowledge they need to have, the expertise they need to have, the services that they need to have, the solutions that they need to have to deploy those technologies um, with that customer. Now, in majority of the cases, the customer will never come in contact with us because we are behind the scenes supporting our partners. However, increasingly, we are seeing three motions that we work with. One is with our partners, we do a sell to, right? Partner knows what they want, they've worked with the customer, they've established a need, um, they come to us and we help them um, deliver that technology. We do a sell with. So this is the part where you're talking about more of the newer technologies where the partner may be lacking some of that expertise. So this is where our, our experts, and give you an idea, we have over 300 certifications just in the last year with AWS, um, where our experts would then help the partner actually land that technology with the customer. And then the ultimate level is a sell for. You're talking about longer sell cycles, very complex, where they really need to get deep. So we have our own um, experience centers, uh, customer immersion uh, uh, programs, where the customer actually comes to us with a partner, where we then help them actually get through that process. So you're a multi-tier distribution system. You provide service layer to the frontline partners before the end users, provide support and software technology and, and executive services for them to serve their customer. That's right. So because they're probably not staffed up, they don't have the resources, they have a good business model, and they want to make a lot of money. They do, they do, and... Um, they have good gross profit margins? <laughs> I hope so. Um, I, ho I hope we, we, we help them actually deliver better profit margins and as they move to services and recurring revenues with cloud, that becomes more predictable and sustainable for them as well. Well, just, I, was, I was kidding, but I'm, I'm serious. I want to get into this gross margin because I think one of the things that you're bringing up with this question is, if I'm a, re uh, a partner and I'm talking to an end user, I, might, I want to make a lot of profit, so services are naturally important. I make more gross profit on services. Absolutely. So if you have volume discounts on things, that I might not have that volume discount if I'm going direct to the manufacturer or platform. You provide that, is that right? Am I getting that right? That you guys get provide that discount, pass through? We do. Um, with AWS, we get a lot of uh, support through their programs. They announced many programs this week, for instance. And as the partner gains more specializations and they gain access to more support through us, they also gain access to some preferred um, uh, pricing. So, uh, uh, to an extent it's about volume, it's also about how deep they go, how, how, how much they invest in their own expertise. 
So it really is a, a not just a volume game, but yeah. it's also a quality game as well. Talk about the operational value that you provide, because you guys must have a lot of programs that pass through to the partner. Uh, software, systems, what kind of examples can you give? If I'm the partner and I have an end user and I have a boutique, let's just say I, I specialize in data analytics and, or whatever, a unique thing, you're providing me services. Is there like certain software systems that you guys have? What operational support do you give to your, your customers? So in terms of the um, technology that the consumer consumes, um, there is a whole range of technologies around data management um, and data analytics. Um, then if you're talking about in terms of the support, the operational support we give to the partner, again, there's the bigger the partner, the more transactions, the more volume they do. They need to have that operational optimization as well. Again, that's where we come in and give them the tools and the technologies they need to optimize that. Okay, so I got to ask you to reinvent, now that we're in person, again, been a year, been two years since we've been to reinvent. What's, the, what, what do you, what's your assessment of the show this year? What's the big takeaway um, that you see this year uh, that you, that's going to be relevant for you? Do you know what? I, I, I love the way these guys um, land some incredibly new <laughs> technologies. Uh, and I love the theme of Pathfinder from yesterday. Um, so when I look at the um, 5G, I mean, that sounds like a game changer to me, and I think there should be a lot of partners out there thinking, hold on a minute, this is a massive opportunity for us. Um, yeah, I mean, so. And the, and the serverless stuff is getting better and better. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, they do a good job on their announcements. Um, there is a reason why their technology is uh, so highly rated. Uh, these guys know how to do technology. <laughs> and I think if, you, if I'm a, if I think of the services that you could roll on top of this. I mean, if you're in front of a customer, big, medium, or large, I mean, if I'm a developer, a service provider, I can make so much more profit by building more of these services because that Pathfinder opens up these net new things. 5G, AI as a service, kind of the, anything. Yeah, um, I mean, partners with, they, they have their business models. They, the ones who have figured out how to wrap the services around the solutions that are out there, um, typically we find that they're the most successful with the fastest growth rates. And they kind of get themselves into a very uh, positive virtuous cycle. Um, the more they can wrap around those services, the higher their value the more margin they tend to make, the more profitable they are. And actually then they continue to invest and expand their footprint. So, Reza, quick advice. Pretend that I am about to become essentially a local trusted value added reseller partner for my end user customers. And I'm going to become a partner of your company. What would your counsel be to me about what I should focus, focus on? What's hot? What's the hottest tip of the spear? Right now? Yes, right now, I need data. to go out and hire these people. Data, data, data. Analytics, data. I would absolutely zoom in on that. Um, it is the new oil. <laughs> <laughs> and every organization needs to have insights. And if businesses out there do not have those insights, they are at a disadvantage. Partners who can figure out how to build services around data they're the guys who are really winning. Awesome, great insight. Reza, thanks for coming on theCUBE here at reInvent. Great conversation, great insight. Thanks for coming on, appreciate My it. My pleasure, okay, thank you. Okay, CUBE coverage. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in worldwide tech coverage here in reInvent. I'm John Furrier with Dave Nicholson, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back. <laughs>